I am taking on Warp Fiend's Black Legion, so naturally I'm going to take my white scars purely for colour balance. Only thing is, I don't have enough of Chagoras' finest painted yet, so let's fix that. Hi folks, I'm Autumn Witch, and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. Ho ho ho, and all that, etc, etc, and so forth. Right, white is a bugger to paint. That is pretty much common knowledge, but I want my white scars looking swish. The method? Don't actually use white. But before we crack on, can I just ask you to like and subscribe, and come find us on our little Facebook group. Anyway, here's how I paint my white scars. Weather-worn, grungy, and badass, which is a word that doesn't sound really good in an English accent. If you haven't seen it yet, I did a video on how I base my white scars, and it starts with cork and plenty of skulls. Rather than a zenithal prime, I go all white with high coat matte white spray, which is more of an off-white. Also, I magnetised the weapon's arms, which I also showed in yet another recent video. Another good reason to subscribe. Hintity hint hint. My first step is to give them an all-over coat of Apothecary White Contrast to bring down that brightness and settle in the recesses for shading. I then go over the undersuit, weapon casings, and anything I want to later be metallic with Black Legion Contrast paint. Then it's Skeleton Horde over any skulls and parchments. Make bite leather over anything uh, leathery, like the wrapping on the sergeant's glaive. The whole thing gets a dry brush of Corax White. This brings the brightness back up, leaving the apothecary white in the recesses. And also hits the black, bone and brown colours with a light highlight. Right, I'm using Bar Red for the trim. I want to use a fair bit of it to break up the white and show them to be veterans, because on normal Space Marines, white shows veteran, and white scars are all white, so it should be another colour. The chest symbols and left shoulder pads get a coat, as do any decorations on the armour, except for on the sergeant, as I want them to be gold. Also, the upper fist casings for the chain fists and power fists also get red, redded, redded. They get painted red. And seraphim sepia over the exposed skin of the sergeant. I do this as it has fewer red tones than any normal flesh colour paint, which just tends to be various shades of Caucasian. I will add more realistic red tones in at a later step. With the black highlighted, I take some thinned Basilicanum Grey and go over the black areas. This tints those highlights, making them better fit the black of the weapon casings. I do similar with Seraphim Sepia over the bone colours and the parchment. It's so much quicker than edge highlighting. The metallics are done with Stormhose Silver, which we will darken down. I have a preference for going light to dark on metallics with with speed painting type things. Anything meant to be gold then gets the coat of Gilliman Flesh contrast over that Stormhost Silver and I then use it to uh, fill in some areas on the sergeant's face and getting into the recesses to add some reds to that skin tone. I have a full video on how to do this muzzle burn effect, but it's basically Gilliman Flesh, Magos Purple, with a little bit of Talisar Blue on the end. Transfers usually come later in the painting process, but they'd look daft if I put them on over the weathering I'll be doing shortly. Usual thing, decal fixer, transfer, decal softener. Yeah. The same thing goes for the company and squad markings, which I sketch on with a red fine liner pen. 
These are great when freehanding, uh, when a brush is a little too tricky or daunting or your hands are a bit crap, like mine. Yep, freehand with pens. I'm surprised Games Workshop doesn't sell these at 10 times the normal markup. I found the right markings online and these lads will be the second squad of the first company, or at least my own variations on those designs. The lines then get filled in with bar red and any slippage or flubs gets corrected with some thinned Corax white. Corax white gets a lot of stick but it can cover pretty much anything with just a couple of thinned coats. Hashtag justice for Corax white. I quickly fill in the eyes with the um, Necrony thing, Tesseract Glow. And I do the lenses with Gilliman Blue Glaze. It's all been building to this. If you've never used panel liners, grab some and try them out. Just use them in a well ventilated room. I left the lid off one a little too long and started seeing Jesus. If you want a clean armour effect, then put down a gloss varnish coat first. But I want an effect more like a, a less dramatic version of streaking grime. These lads prefer running at the enemy over polishing their armour. And I use the brown over the armour panels and black over the silver. After leaving them overnight to dry, I come in again with Corax White on the higher parts of the panels using a stippling motion and feathering those highlights into the grimier part, smudging with a finger to blend if necessary. The smudgy finger is a fantastic hobby accessory and I suggest you all get one. Now it's time to finish up the basing with my usual Geek Gaming Scrublands mix. I do the thing with the glue and the tub and the stuff, then give it all a few drops of super glue to seal it down. And I add a couple of grass tufts to each base to represent the great steppe and grasslands of Chagoris before finishing it off with a black base rim. And that is my squad of Terminators. I just have a squad of Outriders to finish and I'll have a thousand points of white scars ready for the game. Before I leave you with some cool shots of the finished minis, I'd just like to ask you to like and subscribe to help out the channel. It is Christmas after all, and I hope you have a very merry holiday of your own personal inclinations or leanings. I'm Autumn Witch, and I'll catch you next time on Bleeding Tree Gaming.